Not all mobsters started out as scrappy immigrants, carving a life in a strange new world. Or rough-and-tumble city kids, looking for a way out of a desperate cycle of poverty. Some were born gangland royalty, the sons and daughters of first-generation mafiosi, who inherited great wealth and well-established businesses. Likewise, not all organized crime occurred in major cities like Chicago and New York. La Cosa Nostra, a.k.a. the American Mafia, established a national network of nefarious felony from coast to coast. Smaller cities like Providence, Milwaukee, and New Orleans were rife with gang activity and political graft. None were more corrupt than Detroit, Michigan, the booming home of America's fledgling auto industry and its powerful unions. It was here in Gross Point Park, one of the nation's most affluent suburbs, that Giacomo William Tocco was born in 1927, a prince of the American Mafia. Giacomo's father was Sicilian immigrant Guglielmo Vito Black Bill Tocco, who founded the organization known as the Detroit Partnership with his cousin Giuseppe Gioi Uno Cerilli. So successful was this partnership, it quickly became part of La Cosa Nostra's national network. It also allowed Black Bill Tocco to raise his family in comfort. Young Giacomo William was first born to his parents, who quickly moved their young family to the upscale Windmill Point section of Gross Point Park. Giacomo soon became Jack, and Black Jack Tocco grew up lucky. When he received a degree in finance from the University of Detroit in 1949, he and second cousin Anthony Tony Z. Cerilli received a handsome graduation present from their wise guy dads. Co-ownership in the famous Hazel Park Raceway. It was the beginning of a lifelong association between the two second cousins, and one that would end in betrayal. Toko proved from the beginning to be a successful entrepreneur. Besides the racetrack, he owned Melrose Linen Supply and many other enterprises, including extensive real estate holdings, which he managed with his brother Tony. He was a magnanimous benefactor, donating frequently to church, charity, and community. It was widely rumored that Toko owned the Hillcrest Country Club and Moravian Hills Golf Club in Macomb County again using James Tamer along with Simon Thomas as fronts to assure the club's liquor license was approved. Hillcrest listed some of Michigan's most influential people as members, and Thomas used his entertainment industry connections to bring in stars like Frank Sinatra, Paul Anka, and Wayne Newton to perform at both establishments. Toko was an affable, magnanimous personality who moved with ease among the city's elite insulated from the street-level crime that was the foundation of his wealth. Throughout the 50s and 60s, Giacomo Tocco continued to live the American dream, amassing a sizable personal fortune. Meanwhile, the Detroit partnership, still run by original gangsters, was in decline. Control had fallen to co-founder Joey Uno in 1964 when Black Bill, in failing health, moved to Florida. Cousin Tony Z took over for a time, but soon went to prison for skimming the New Frontier Hotel in Las Vegas. With Joey Uno forced out of retirement and back in charge, the aging Dons soon fell victim to infighting, greed, and increased law enforcement attention. 
as well as the natural attrition of the Grim Reaper's harvest. On May 28, 1972, William Black Bill Toko, founding member of the Detroit Partnership and Jack Toko's father, died in a Miami hospital. Joey Uno would hang on for seven more years until 1979 when at age 52, Black Jack Toko finally assumed leadership of the Detroit Partnership. By then, the outfit was a decimated organization with several key members dead or facing prison. Toko quickly lost another valuable resource with the death of Papa John Priziola, trusted consigliere, and one of the last original ruling dons from the partnership's inception nearly a half century before. But Toko was a savvy leader and a shrewd businessman who preferred keeping a low profile and pulling strings from behind the curtains. Unlike flashier mob bosses, he eschewed the limelight and kept well away from the headlines. Because of this, Black Jack Toko not only survived and righted the ship, but would go on to become the longest ruling godfather in the history of the Mafia. By the end of his reign, one insider would say, Black Jack knew all the secrets and where all the bodies were buried. And that would include Teamsters president Jimmy Hoffa. Many observers expected trouble when Tony Z was released from prison to stake a claim to his father's post. But Tony soon found himself back in hot water after being recorded bragging to an FBI informant about his activities in Las Vegas. This stroke of luck was a double-edged sword. Cerilli's comments triggered a federal investigation into the Detroit family's interest in the Aladdin Hotel and Casino, operated by frontman James Tamer, a convicted bank robber. Jack Tocco had gotten rich on countless real estate schemes from Detroit to Las Vegas, and now the government wanted its cut. On March 15, 1996, Jack Tocco and 16 partnership members were finally arrested. What followed was a circus of prosecutorial ineptitude. The government sought a forfeiture of proceeds derived from the defendants' respective alleged crimes, claiming that Toko and four other co-defendants were liable for over $5 million in profits from the sale of two hotels in Las Vegas, various street tax and other extortions, and proceeds from the collection of unlawful gambling debts. The district court concluded there was no factual basis for assessing any forfeiture against the defendants. Eventually, the government managed to indict 16 people on 25 counts related to involvement in the Detroit branch of the national mafia network known as La Cosa Nostra. Jack Tocco was convicted on two counts of conspiracy under the RICO Act. Such was his popularity that during sentencing, Black Jack was supported by several high-profile community figures, including former Detroit Tigers manager Sparky Anderson, ex-Warren Mayor Ronald Bonkowski, political fundraiser Frank Stella, Tigers executive Gary Vito, members of the Kilgore family, Gross Point City Councilman Patrick Petz, and a host of restaurant owners, retired judges, doctors, lawyers, and priests. Judge John Corbett O'Meara sentenced Toko to less than a year at a halfway house, with stipulations that he could conduct family business daily and return to the facility at night. Prosecutors were outraged and demanded prison time. Toko was resentenced to a year at the federal medical facility in Rochester, Minnesota. His sentence was reduced for good behavior and he was released in 1999 after serving less than 11 months. Prosecutors again appealed Judge O'Meara's sentence, claiming it was below minimum sentencing requirements. On January 5th, 2000, the U.S. Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals ruled that the judge who sentenced Toko originally was too lenient in his sentencing. Prosecutors this time had found a rat. Toko's cousin Nove arranged a deal with the feds to get out of prison. As part of his statement, he told the prosecutors that Jimmy Hoffa was murdered at Toko's residence, bludgeoned and buried with the same shovel. Investigators excavated the property, turning up nothing. But there was a bigger problem with Nove's testimony. He was forced to admit that he never received direct orders from Toko, allowing him to engage in the extortion activities that landed him in prison in the first place. With prosecutors facing even further damage to their reputation, Toko was 
resentenced to 34 months with credit for one year served, making him eligible for early release. On November 21st, 2001, Tolko was released from federal prison. Having beaten the feds at every turn and avoided the vengeance and violence associated with organized crime for his entire career, Giacomo Black Jack Tolko died peacefully surrounded by family on July 14th, 2014. He was married for over 60 years, had eight children, 17 grandchildren, and two great-grandchildren, and by the end of his life had ruled Detroit partnership for nearly 40 years. His passing prompted one reporter to note, things will never be the same. He was one of the final links to that golden era, Black Jack Toko, the last of the old school godfathers.